G'day everybody, how are you going today? It is so very good to see you. And in this episode, we're going to talk about the latest, yes, the latest bits and pieces of photography news from around the web. It has been a ridiculous couple of weeks with basically, I think, the Z9 stealing the show for the last little while. It's certainly been top of mind and in most every conversation that I've had for the last few weeks, both here online in this space, but also with friends around the community. Even people, I have a great mate called Bruce, and he's, he basically uses every camera system, and he is super excited about the Z9. He's got a, uh, a 500mm PF lens that he wants to throw on the front of a Z9, and he said, as soon as you get one, you've got to come and show it to me. So, yeah. A lot of people from all over the spectrum, Canaconi, and I'm reading it in my comments as well, all over the spectrum, whether you're a Sony user or a Canon user, people are understanding and respecting that Nikon, the great brand of Nikon, is here and back. So, indeed, there's been a, a lot of Z9 information, but I think it's rightly so. It's been a long time coming, years in the making for Nikon to get to this point, and here we are. So it's okay to celebrate for a bit. I reckon, and it's great for the whole industry because it is going to drive the whole industry forward. Absolutely no doubt about it. So in the latest, we're going to talk just a little bit about the Z9, not very much at all because we've talked a lot about it. And we're going to talk about some of the other things that have been going on. In a way, it's been, I suppose, quiet and rightly so because you just had to, everybody had to just let the Z9 and everything that came with it land. Okay, let's get into it. First, before we kick off this episode, at the end of this episode, I'm going to let you know who is the winner of this NKI 512GB super fast card. Now, what I don't know yet is whether this is at the really, really high end that we've seen in many videos for the buffer tests on the Z9, but to the best of my understanding, this is pretty damn fast. So it'll either sit in the second fastest tier, I think, or the fastest tier. Winner announced at the end. So indeed the Z9, I think right now everything that we need to say about specs has probably been said 25 times over and more. I suppose the latest information that's now starting to roll in is that the camera is selling insanely well. I'm talking to like five different people who are all just saying, yep, selling like crazy amazing. So it really has touched a note and I think it's going far beyond the F users who've been waiting, waiting to see where Nikon would go. I think I think they're coming over in droves. Some are still waiting for the Z8 or the Z7 III and that's totally cool. They don't need or want something of this size or price, but so many people are coming over. And as I said in the opening, not only is it Nikon F users, but I'm a Z user, I've been a Z user since day dot. I'm super excited about it and there are so many of us and as well as I think you're gonna see some people from other brands, I think that is actually going to happen because I'm already hearing about it in my comments and what's amazing about the comments is it's just real people telling you what they're feeling and thinking. And you know, sometimes that's good and sometimes it's not, sometimes it's highs and sometimes it's lows, but you also get a mountain, an absolute mountain of real world information. And of course you have to take some of it with a grain of salt. There's a lot of data in those comments in there and a lot of the world is interested in it. And of course, Nikon has come in at this killer price of five and a half thousand US dollars. A ridiculously exciting time ahead. And again, I can't wait to get one in my hands and I will be sharing everything I possibly can with you ASAP. And as we're talking about Z9, monster and I want to just give you one just one piece of information that I've picked up from all of the just huge amount of YouTube streams and whatever that's going on I want you to watch this clip here there's two things that and the new processor so we're using an X speed 7 processor but it's essentially 12 times more powerful than the dual X speed six in a Z6 to Z7 to. So that's kind of the order of magnitude that we're talking about here. But those two components, the new sensor and the new processor create this throughput that allows us to get data several orders of magnitude faster. So that is crazy. That is stating that the X speed seven 
is not 10. It's not 11. But it's 12 times faster than the Z6 II and Z7 II. 12 times faster than those dual processor machines. That is nuts. Now, that helps to inform us as to what our expectations should be for what can and might happen in a Z6 II or Z7 II firmware update. Again, I know absolutely nothing about what is coming or what we should expect from these updates. I'm sure there will be some form of update because we are still only in the 1.xx and the original Z6 and Z7 we're up to threes now. So I do believe there's a firmware update as to what's in it and how much is in it. It's very hard to say, but with a 12 times difference in processing power, I think what we might be able to expect is some of the logic that's in there. And when I say logic, some of the processes, but they simply will not be running at the speeds. And things like, you know, face detect, bird detect, eye detect, this whole new system, I just don't think we can expect to see it with that massive a difference. But there is a lot going on. There's a lot of new ideas and new concepts. So let's talk about that in the comments below. And hopefully in the future, we will be able to talk about it more. I've also got a super exciting guest, a very, very intriguing and exciting Australian photographer who works in an industry that I have been in and out of over my 30 year career. And this man is highly talented and we're still trying to organize the time that we're going to get him on live stream, talk about his career. So hang out for that one. I'm just I'm going to I'm going to keep it as a surprise as to who it is, but it's coming soon. He's just a very busy man and we, we have to work schedules out. But um, just some more real world Z9 usage from a guy who's a professional like what he does is he shoots like 50, 60 hours a week, camera in hand the whole time. And this is the people that these cameras are actually made for. So it will be great to hear what he thinks and feels about it. Moving on from the Z9 and just the monster occasion that it has been, let's talk a little bit about the 24 to 120 and the 100 to 400. We've got these two amazing lenses. Of course, Ricci has got both of them, I believe now, and we will see more from him. Check out his video on the 100 to 400 already up. I'm sure the 24 to 120 is not too far away, is it, sir? Thanks again for an amazing chat with you and Seth. That was awesome. And everybody out there, we will be doing it again. We are committed to doing it again. We've got, obviously, as was mentioned in that video, more firmware updates coming for the Z9 that we want to talk about further. And as well as, well, maybe we can talk a little bit about firmware for any Z6 or Z7 or Z62 or Z72. These two lenses, the 24 to 120 and the 100 to 400, they, they look very exciting. I've already got my 24 to 120 on order with my local store. Digi Direct, thank you very much. If you, yeah, I'd love to be at the top of the list. It'd be amazing. I don't know when they're coming. I'm guessing it's probably a similar sort of distance away as the Z9. But you know, Nick, I might surprise us. It could well be that that lens turns up earlier. I have no idea. But what I'm hearing from the store is it's something around the end of this month for all of these things. End of this month, start of December. We will find out when it arrives. And finally, just before we move away from the Nikon news, please, I've got a poll below. Will you or are you getting a Z9? Jump to the poll below and let me know. I'm just really intrigued. Are you planning or have you already decided to get a Z9? Link below for the poll. Well, of course, there are already some rumblings in regards to Canon. It goes without saying that Canon needs to respond in some way to the Z9. Uh, it is by no way throwing any shade upon the R3 to say that, well, the R3 is not a Z9 and we do expect just by, purely by that very numbering that the R1 is coming. I think what I find most intriguing is that the rumor sites are saying, yes, it's coming, but we don't have anything more to say and it might come a year from now. So, okay, Canon might have leaked that information out that we've got roughly a year to wait for an R1. 
that's fine. I think that completely would meet logic and expectations. So that's all I can really tell you about it. Uh, you know, we can make some assumptions like, yes, it will have 8K and yes, it probably will be 45 megapixels or more. Yes, it will be a full bodied camera. And yes, they may well follow in Nikon's footsteps and remove a shutter. Indeed. So there you go. If the Z9 is the benchmark for this style of camera, you can expect it to be a Z9 and maybe a smidge more. I do think it will be at least a year and it may be longer. Let's wait and see what happens from Canon. But right now, Nikon is holding our attention. Now, just as a quick community service announcement, I don't work for Capture One, but I love their software and I've been using it since I stopped using Aperture. I think I, I think I first started using it in like 2009. I can't really remember. They've got a sale on at the moment for version 22. It's 20% off uh, and I'm upgrading. It makes it pretty affordable. And if you are purchasing a Z9 and you do use Capture One, it's a very good time to buy. The sale ends in a few days. And I do think that the Z9 RAW converter will be in that new version. I don't think we'll get it in version 21. So just think about that. If you want to be able to play with your RAWs, of course, Adobe will be updating, I'm sure, Lightroom. Now, very quietly, Panasonic did a little press release in regards to what they're calling an organic sensor. Now, this sensor is still not ready for full production, but if it ever comes into full production, golly gosh, it sounds very exciting. This has happened just in the last few days, but it really hasn't had a lot of headlines. Let me just read to you via Google Translation what this sensor can achieve, allegedly. It's called the Panasonic 35 megapixel organic Super 35 CMOS sensor with global shutter. And they're saying it has great dynamic range. They replace the silicon photodiode that has been used as the light receiving part of the conventional CMOS sensor with an organic thin film that has a larger light absorbing coefficient. Sounds good so far. Further to that, this sensor also has wide dynamic range and a global shutter. And they're saying here that the organic CMOS sensor has a dynamic range four times that of a general CMOS sensor, four times the dynamic range. That would blow my mind. I love dynamic range, although I don't want it to become HDR, but anyway. They're also saying as they're prototyping through this that their color reproduction is very, very high. Another interesting little tidbit of technical information here is, is that the next generation technology for organic CMOS sensor, there is an ultra wide technology in which two sensitivity detection cells, a high sensitivity cell and a high saturation cell are provided on one pixel. So does that mean they've got sort of two, two cells or diodes or collecting methods that do two different things in the one pixel? I think that's what they're saying here, which is very interesting to me. This is technology that's been worked on for a long time. There has been a partnership between Fuji and Panasonic to the best of my understanding, working on this. It's been a long time coming. It's still not here, it's still not finished. But if a sensor like this comes to light, then wow, it sounds like an extremely powerful and interesting sensor. But we're still very much in the R&D phase by the sounds of it. Okay, so before we get to the winner of the CF Express card, I just wanna quickly talk about the fact that DJI have launched a new camera. It's the Action Cam number two. It's up there with the kind of the GoPros and the Insta 360s, but they've created a modular version. Otherwise, give or take, the specifications between all these cameras are pretty similar, but they do have some neat ideas going on here. So if you are into the Action Cam space, check it out. Okay, and let's end this episode by talking about the winner of the NKI 512 card. Thank you so much, NKI, for giving this away to one of the viewers. Now, the competition was based on which comment got the most likes. And, uh, well, who knows? There's different ways to do competitions. This is the way that we decided to do it this time. Now, the person with the most likes, I'm gonna read out what they said and tell you how many likes they got. 
And the name is A Jazz Cap. Hey, great content as always. I would love to win the card because recently I got married and I will be visiting Svalbard for our honeymoon. I have a Nikon Z62 and a few SD cards like 64 gig. And it would be really sad if I ran out of space during our trip. Svalbard is a really unique place near the North Pole and I want to capture every moment of it. Thank you and good luck to all. How lovely, I love that. So, a jazz cap from, well, somewhere in the Northern Hemisphere, I'm guessing, you with 134 likes on your comment, you have won this epic 512 gigabyte card. It'll work great in your Z6 II. I know that because I've been using it in mine. Well, there we have it, everybody. That is the latest from what has been an epically massive last few weeks in the photo industry. The Z9 is taking the world by a storm. I'm sorry, some people disagreed with me making that statement, but even if you're not interested in it, even if you don't like it, everybody is looking, and that's what it's all about. It's such an exciting time for photography, for Nikon, and for people who want high-speed action. This is what you've been wanting, a camera that you can take to the ends of the earth that will just keep on going, and as Nikon has said themselves, is unstoppable. Please, let me know in the poll below. There's a link there, Z9 or not. Let us know. Let me know in the comments below. Are you excited about any of what's going on in the latest this week? Are you maybe going to wait for an R1? Are you a Z9? Are you going to be getting the 24 to 120? Are you going to get the DJI action? Who knows? Any or all of those. Please let me know in the comments below. Absolutely fantastic to see you. It's just, it's been an epic week with all these live streams and everything going on. And well, I've got plenty more coming actually. It's pretty exciting and it's lots of fun and I really love interacting live. So thank you so much for everybody that's been a part of it. And I would like to thank again very much Seth and Ricci, two amazing blokes and we look forward to doing it all again for you very soon. All right, take it easy. Don't forget to subscribe and like and all of that business. Can of Coney. get some.